Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to the garden on a beautiful afternoon. The sun is out, it's warm, it's beautiful. Yes, I'm wearing a winter jacket and the reason for it is that I want to take you with me to the back of the garden at the slope and do some planting there. And there is a little bit of a chilly wind and I thought, you know what, I'm sitting on the ground so better feel warm and toasty than freeze there. Oh, look at my back. I just see this situation now. I already kind of told you in one of my previous videos, there was a Christmas tree that stood next to the main entrance. Um, around Christmas time and it was so beautiful. We potted it up together and this is what happens. I, I watered it. I honestly did. I don't really know what the problem was. Maybe buying a Christmas tree for very little money in the hardware store in the end was not such a good idea because the other one that I bought in the garden center looks just perfect. But yeah, this is what it is. It's brown. It kind of matches the color of the Christmas ornaments that I had this year. So when I return from Germany, this is for the chop. This is going to go straight onto the compost tea. But what I want to do is obviously take you to the slope and we do some planting there. And I'm going to start planting some of my tender plants, my dahlias and some cannas as well. It is very early for that. I have to admit it, but you know, I'm leaving for two weeks and nobody's going to take care of them really here. And I don't want to leave them just outside here in the garden because I think once they are in the ground and mulched and well, that's 10 times better than leaving them in the containers here in the upper garden and to be fair I started hardening them off already like 10 days ago I think and I forgot them a couple of nights outside as well so they are definitely hardened off now and the weather forecast is absolutely on my side no frosty nights anymore maybe two degrees maybe one degree but that doesn't really do a lot of harm to them and I also need to give you a little bit of a warning the dahlias that you saw last time indoors when they were like beautiful nurtured plants and they had so many leaves and they were beautiful Forget about that image because after hardening them off in our beautiful wind on the dike here, they lost most of their leaves. So they look a little shabby right now, but the stems are still looking good and strong and robust. And there are a lot of buds, so I know that they're definitely gonna bounce back. So what I'm gonna do now, obviously, first thing, take you with me to the slope and give you a quick tour of all those things that I wanna plant with you today. This is the left side of the slope. And if I just swing around, you get to see the upper garden now coming with a house in the back there. So you see that the property is kind of like elongated and towards the end there is a slope which I leveled into terraces so it's really wonderful to work in here and you see a lot of plastic bags and containers already standing here. So these are all the plants that I'm going to put into the ground. I have a planting scheme that I showed you already in previous videos and I really put them exactly in those locations where they're bound to go. What I'm going to do is take you through area by area like terrace through terrace now and just explain to you exactly what I intend on putting into the ground. This is the second terrace with a little basket weave fan section to the left and you can tell that the Fritillaria persica they really come to life now and one is far ahead already with a really nice flower spike and you might see that they start to tint up because this is a very dark variety almost on the purple blackish side really excited about those and back there is a drift of tulips they've got to be pink and they start to bud up as well so i'm expecting tulips at one point i'm so excited about this but what i want to do is obviously plant a little bit and there is a blob of dahlias here two of them i already started off indoors and this is how the situation is basically so you can tell a lot of the leaves are looking really shabby. Some of them are looking still quite all right, but most importantly, the stems are still strong and looking good. This is exactly what you want to see. This is a variety. I can just give you a closer look at the pot because I wrote it down. This is called Canora Makeup. It flowers red, one meter to one meter 40 in height. Perfect for cut flowers. I grew it last year. Absolutely loved using it for cut flowers green foliage so i think this is going to be a really wonderful site here and next to it there'd be a drift of cannas this is a new variety that i've never grown before i have eight in total can show you the name on the back this is canna futurity red so they have red flowers they have absolutely great dark dark red foliage kind of tropical vibe almost like banana leaves in a way and they can grow between one meter and one meter 50 in height according to the online shop i hope this is going to happen because all the terraces are still masked with black landscape fabric, which is not beautiful to look at, but I thought cannas might just do the perfect job of covering that up and hiding everything. So I'm not going to see anything what is going on here in summertime. Besides Alfie, maybe, because she's joining me already, right? Well, you're not excited about me because you probably see something on the farmland, whatever that is. This is the second terrace and where I want to continue planting. So what you see just in front of you is an elder. It's not one of those fancy black lace elders that you might know. This is just a very ordinary one, but you know what? I like it. I like what it's doing here. It's good for wildlife. Obviously, every year I come in and cut it back hard because it just grows with so much vigor. But what I want to do in this area is underplant it a little bit with these beauties here. 
They have a lot of shabby leaves as well. This is a Rechinus, but you know what? The most important thing is that those stems, they were lying flat for a good day. So I thought, oh, I'm not sure if I need to re-sow, but they all came back. They're really strong and sturdy now. And if I just take one of these stems, so you can tell that towards the center, a lot of new leaves are actually appearing. So this is the most important thing. And I think when I bury them, I'm gonna bury these stems a little bit deeper into the soil just to anchor them better. So let's see how this is going to work. If we continue walking towards this side here, here are some daylilies or hemerocalis. This is, where is it? Hemerocalis daring deception. This is, I don't want to say a little iffy because when I ordered them they were supposed to be peachy with like a reddish center. I think they're more on the pinkish side with a reddish center. So let's see. They were really not expensive. This is one of those things like when you buy perennials in these bags, they already have like first signs of growth, have a good root system and they were honestly super cheap. So if they don't look nice in the slightest, it's not one of those things where your heart breaks if you throw it out at one point. But I think they might be quite cute here. Obviously there's some aster, so I need to do some moving in this area as well. But if we continue walking, there are two more things that I wanna plant here. Second thing is, oh no, the third thing actually, this is one of those dahlias that I also grew indoors, you might remember. This is preference, the color is peach. It grows one meter 20 to one meter 50. It's a cacti, so it has really nice, interesting blooms and it was perfect for cut flowers as well. The next thing that I want to put here now, I made just the decision because it was actually not my planting scheme. I forgot that I ordered it and when I unpacked it, I was like, did I really order that? What was I thinking? Canna vanilla cream. I'm not a huge sucker on yellow. If it's like sulfury yellow or kind of like weird tones of yellow chartreuse, then I'm full in it. But this is supposed to be vanilla yellow, which is really not my color scheme. So I'm like, okay, what, honestly, what was I thinking? Maybe I'm gonna love them though. So let's see, I just put, I've just three of them anyway. So all I do is I put them here, hope for the best, and maybe I'm gonna love them. And in the end, they'll be my favorite of the year. You never know. On to the last terrace. This is where I planted some artichokes. So three are down here that I just planted together with you. And then you see some bags and containers. So if we start walking, I wanna put a lot and lot of dahlias here. And this last layer, I wanna to dedicate to all tones of peach and blue in combination. So all my dahlias will be peachy in here. This is Dr. P.H. Riedel. There are three combs in here, tubers three tubers in here, very excited about them. Uh, beautiful flowers, height one meter plus. It says orange, but it was definitely like peach. Never order bright orange, but even if it is bright orange here, I think it might work in this kind of tropical zingy vibe that I'm going for. Next, there's still some kale, still looking nice. I should harvest it probably, but you know what? I really love this, the structure and texture that it does. So I'm kind of like, oh. And amongst all of this like brown nothing that is here, it's nice to have something that cheers you up and makes you like, oh, that is nice. So I don't know, maybe I just let it bulk totally and let it come to bloom and let's see, I'm not really sure what to do. Here are some containers. So these are some canners that I potted up indoors with you. Out of six pots, two don't show any sign of growth at all. So I'm gonna take a closer look at those today. Four are looking a lot better already, which is obviously really nice. I put on one of those containers what it is. This is Monique, 70 centimeters to one meter, obviously peach color, interesting foliage. Can't wait for those. I think they'd be very happy and very beautiful here. And just behind it, I wanna put more dahlias, three more dahlias. This is creme de cognac. This is kind of like a creme de cassis, if you know it, but in a really interesting, rusty, burnt orange kind of tone. It kind of had orange red, but it's really like burnt orange. Uh, 60 centimeters to 80 centimeters. There are three tubers in the bag as well, so very excited to put those into the ground, obviously. And then you see a very long drift, and those are obviously more canners because there is a lot more bland landscape fabric. And I'd be so happy to cover it up because when Autumn comes, I really want to take some nice photos of this area and I think it would look so much nicer when all of this will be covered up as good as it possibly can. This is, can you see it? Yes. Canna Louis Cotton. It grows between 80 centimeters to one meter. One meter would be definitely preferred. And it has peachy blooms. I'm super excited about those. I really have quite a lot of them. And I think this will be just the perfect area because it's a lot of sun. It doesn't dry out completely in here because we're so far at the base of the slope already, which is ideal for cannas as well because I don't really appreciate to dry out completely. And then the last two things are here. 
There's another bag of three dahlias. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I was really longing for this one. Can you read it? Totally tangerine. Again, kind of like pale orange, kind of like peachy with a pink glow, it says. Height, one meter plus. Well, three in here, and they already have first signs of growth, so they're really exciting. I've seen them on Instagram a lot last year, so I definitely know what to expect out of them. This is also why I put them here in the sunniest location, because I'm so excited about them. And another last daily where I'm also extremely excited about. This is something that we potted up indoors. Okay, really need to twist it. This is Babylon Bronze Peach, one meter to one meter 20. Just have one of them, but I think in general, this would be just a really nice blend of all different kind of like tropical plants in here. I already prepared a planting hole for the dahlia and how to do it is basically just take your container, just scoop it out of the soil in the size to what the container is and then I just put it in here to make sure that it fits. It does fit extremely well. One quick word about dahlias, just in case if I haven't said it before, is dahlias, they originate from Mexico and they come in all dazzling colors that you can possibly imagine. And when you want to plant dahlias, really make sure that you give them a lot and a lot of sun because only then they really come to flower and all of these look rich, zingy colors, they also look best when they're really exposed to full sun. All I'm going to do now is always same old story I come in with my starting fertilizer just a little bit of organic bone chips there's anyways already something in here so tip the container over gently let's see how this is gonna look I hope it doesn't crumble apart completely and I haven't prepared it obviously because it doesn't come out naturally or easy now at all okay so maybe give it a little bit pressure here. I hope I haven't broken the stem already. Maybe. <laughs> there are more stems to come. Okay, this is how it looks. Ooh. Okay, this is good. There, one tube is mushy. This really happened because it was outside. The others are looking really good. Perfect timing to put them into the ground now. Honestly, oh, that was a good idea. All I'm going to do put it in, mulch it in, perfect, fine, happy, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed I haven't killed them. I have still more of those in bags indoors though, just in case I brought back up. Because there was a momentum where I was a little scared and I thought, oh, after this really cold night, maybe that was not such a good idea, but all right. At least they're in. I'm just quickly going to plant the other two and then we continue planting cannas. I quickly planted the other two dahlias and they are looking fine. Luckily, there was no sign of mushy tuber at all, so hopefully it was just the one. There's still two more sitting in the container, so let's see what I'm gonna discover there. But before that happens, I just wanna lose a few quick words about canna. So obviously, if you ever plan on growing something tropical in your garden, cannas are just the thing because the foliage is hard to compare to anything. Whenever I see them in a garden or in any kind of like setting, I think they just bring this extra element of glamour to it instantly and I'm really happy to have a big drift here. When you talk about cannas, they originate pretty much similar area to what dahlias do. Dahlias are from Mexico, Middle America, and cannas you go further south, so some Caribbean islands, um, Colombia, Venezuela, this is where they come from originally. They are in the same family as gingers, but don't eat these, they're not edible. I know you can eat dahlias, apparently. I once read in a blog that they are edible, but that they don't taste nice, and I was like, okay, if that's already how it reads in the blog, I'm still not gonna do it. So cannas, they are rising kind of similar to bearded iris so it's sometimes a little iffy to say well how to put it in the ground I'm going to give you closer looks as I continue planting so you really can see better how they look because they kind of sometimes have roots facing like this one here really good in all different directions and angles and how I do it is I kind of look like okay there are shoots appearing which directions do the shoots grow or best case there's even an old stem here which is a good indicator and that stem clearly faces into this direction so I know I need to put it into the ground like this not other way around because the roots they are kind of everywhere here. How to do it? Very, very easy. All you do is you loften up your soil a little bit. Just like that. Now we need to go here for some starting fertilizer quickly. Just put it in there. Okay, here's apparently a little bit of a hole. And then all I do is, again, I'll give you closer looks in a second. I put it in here and I don't bury a rhizome too deep. Like the canna rhizome, I just cover it gently with the soil, really gently. And then what I do is I really mulch it in well because the mulch 
helps to retain the moisture, which is really important for cannas because they do not like to dry out. Then they really start to show it on their leaves quite fast and instantly. Um, and on top of it at this time of the year, obviously the mulch also makes sure that if there is frost, which it is not on the forecast, but just in case, if there is, the frost is not going to get so easily to the riser. So this is exactly what I'm going to do in a second, just plant all of these, how I explain to you. Next thing to do is we walk over there to the Hammerocalus. Hemorrhoculus or daylilies are definitely one of the most beautiful perennials that you can have for the high summer garden because they really come to bloom in about like July, August, which is a time where a lot of the other plants kind of like fade out a little bit and you have this gap in your garden. And if this happens to you, maybe daylily might be just the thing. And even more interesting, I think is most daylilies are indestructible at least in my experience. I once had a variety that I got from a neighbor and I was not so fond of it. So I was like, okay, I, got, I threw it on the compost tip. That's what happened to that one and it thrived on the compost heap. And that says a lot, you know, it was just lying there and like it started to root in just somewhere in the compost and it was happy. And then I was like, okay, if this happens to you, I can't leave you there. So I just carried it back into the garden. And this is why I have a dang orange day lily in the back garden. And I think I'm gonna have it probably forever because this story now is in the back of my mind forever, even though I don't really love bright bright orange there's something that always reminds me of a trash car at least like in germany they have that color so i'm always a little bit like mm. all right but this is going to be beautiful though i think daylilies come in a big range of colors really interesting beautiful like really greenish yellow towns that i also found quite beautiful as well and since they are almost indestructible it is also very easy to plant them and planting these four is literally going to take two minutes out of me probably all i do is just loften up the soil just sprinkle some of the starting fertilizer in and since these are kind of like bare root i mean there is a minimal amount of soil in here literally nothing that i'm just going to bung into the planting hole this is how these plants look like they just have kind of like big fleshy roots a few nicer fibrous ones and then these first leaves are appearing and I think this is also what makes daylilies so extra special is the foliage because they almost look like a grass and they do it for a very long time of the year they start quite early the ones that I have on the upper garden they already look like quite something like nice fresh and lush already and for me at this time of the year this is so important because a lot of the other perennials not do anything so this is why I really feel like I need to kind of like amp up my game with daylilies maybe let's see how this one is going to perform all you do is since this is bare root I just put it in the planting hole up until the level where the first shoots kind of like appear you don't want to bury it you don't want to make sure you don't want that it sits idle either so really put it in nice and gentle now a little deeper because otherwise it sits idle and then I just backfill it firm it in to make sure that there are no air pockets just put the mulch back so it's mulched in nice and this is it. And by the way, I'm not watering anything today. The reason is that I just figured that the dailies in the container, I kind of overwatered them. <laughs> I think they were really wet. And in two days, there will be rain here. 100% sure of the forecast is like 100% rain for an entire day. So I'm like, this is fine. The soil is still nice and moist here because of all the mulch. So no watering today, one job less to do. Okay, the last thing I want to show you are dahlias again, kind of what we started with. I'm going to end with those as well, but this time straight tubers. They come fresh from the back. When you plant them, almost the same to what I've shown you already when you put them in containers and start them off indoors earlier in the year. But I have a couple of advices for you still, because when I plant them, all I do is I dig a hole and then I come in with good fresh garden compost. And this is really based on my own experience. A couple of years ago, I put some dahlias in the upper garden and I just put them there. Didn't do anything to the soil they were all right but they were not fantastic and then the next year what I did is I enriched the soil and I came in with horse manure don't have it yet I still try to get my hand on some because there are some horses around here because that does wonders to it like that year when I had the horse manure there those dahlias produced so many flowers and leaves they were vigorous so many stems those were the best I ever ever had so if you can get your hand on horse manure maybe cow works as well I heard from people that they do it but do yourself a favor try to do it so what i'm going to do now very easy and simple i just really come in with some good fresh garden compost straight from the back just in here mix it a little bit with the native soil so to really improve the entire soil structure of this area and then obviously again 
a little bit of my organic bone chip starting fertilizer. Again, dig it all under. And then all I do is I come in with a tuber and you can tell that last year they cut it off here. So probably it sat up until here into the ground. This is what I would say, because you don't cut it just straight onto the ground. You always leave a little bit on a heel, kind of like a centimeter, two centimeters maybe. So don't drown your dahlias. Don't bury them too, too deep. So I try to put it into the ground pretty much at the exact same level to where it was last year. This looks fairly good. Again, firm it in nicely from all sides. And then what I do, obviously, come in with a mulch mulch it in and fingers crossed that this is gonna look nice. They are really good quality, I can tell you. Each and every one of them already has a shoot, but if you go closer at them and you take a look, you can tell that really there are a lot and a lot of sleeping eyes and some of them already changed color. So I think they'd be very happy once they're in the ground now. Super excited about this variety. Totally tangerine is gonna look so great. One last thing I'm gonna do and show you a closer look is still excited how this daily and the container looks because there was one that was very precious and I was so excited. So I'm gonna tip it over together with you now and show you the situation. So this is Dahlia Babylon Bronze, one of those peachy ones, bronzy tone, and I was so excited about that. The thing that gives me hope is even though it looks really shabby, I mean, look at all these leaves here. On all these axes, you can see that new shoots are just appearing and even at the base of the stem, there are, I think, six or seven new shoots appearing. So this really gives me hope. Let's see how it looks on the inside. Just tip it over. Yes. Oh, that looks good. A lot of roots and it holds its shape, which is already good when you tip something over and the soil stays exactly as it is because it has rooted in so well. This is always ideal, but it's not pot bound. So the roots are not growing round and round. So actually it is a good, quite, quite good time of the year to put it into the ground. So quickly into the planting hole, mulch it back in and I'm happy. So what I'm gonna do now is really work my way through and plant everything in one big go. Welcome straight after speed dating, speed planting. All I needed literally was a bell, kind of like ding, ding, next, ding, ding, next. I was working my way through all those stations, dated every single plant, but everything is in the ground now, so thrilled about it. Obviously, this is the point of the video where I always love to give you a little bit of a tour, and I do at least with those things where you can see something, but it's kind of the same with planting tulips, for example. When you plant tubers or rhizomes, you just dig a hole, bong them there, I hope for the best, you disappear, and all I can show you is mulch at this point, which is obviously not super exciting. Still, I think I can find a few things and maybe some spring things here on the slope as well. I didn't really say a lot about these before I actually planted them. These are the cannas. This is a variety called Monique that I potted up with you indoors. And most of them looked really nice. Out of the six containers, six have really rooted in, which was wonderful. The other three rhizomes, they were still looking all right though, which gives me confidence. And they are just next to the blue 
Amazia Artemisia. Ooh, we just planted it together and I already forgot the proper name. And just behind it, I think I'm going to miss the bloom. Hopefully not. Maybe when I come back, I'm still going to enjoy it. These are peach color hyacinth. And everybody who knows me knows I am a big, big sucker on anything that is peach and apricot. And I just wanted to have them and see how they come to bloom. I am hoping for the best, but so far, I really love those. Already dancing in the wind, kind of, or just flopping over. I hope they can really withstand the weather conditions here. Rakinus are in. This is the first drift. I'm going to show you more in a second. So this is where they would grow next to the elder. I feel they'd be really beautiful here. The leaves are still green. So in theory, this is a variety where the leaves should tint up in red. I hope that this is still going to happen because they were one of my focal leaf plants for this side of the garden. This is the second layer of this slope where we started planting the dahlia. So this is Kimora makeup again the red one with green foliage and next to it I planted another drift of rachinus and if they really start having red foliage I think they'd be just a perfect planting neighbor because then you have the leaf accent in red from the uh, castor bean or rachinus and next to it you have the green foliage from the dahlias but with really lovely dark red flowers. That is it for today's video and honestly while I was digging my way through the border here there was a momentum where I thought there's no way I'm going to finish it but I've made it. I'm so thrilled about it. Everything that I was really longing to do is in the ground at least. Sun is still up. Wind is picking up. It's really cold wind again. There's a reason for me wearing this winter jacket now but still I'm just going to take Alfie and play with her a little bit because she definitely came short today. But then go inside, make it cozy, pack my suitcase, prepare the car get ready for tomorrow and I just want to throw out there just in case if you're not going to see a single video of me next week then the weather in Germany was not so nice and all those plans that I have in my head right now didn't work out if that happens then I'm going to welcome you at my garden next time again in a week from now so hope you have a wonderful day take care guys bye